First Lady Jill Biden has been diagnosed with two different skin cancers, and today we're gonna to talk about what she was diagnosed with and how it was treated. I'm gonna give you my opinion on the appropriateness of those treatments, and we're gonna learn a little bit together. If you're just new to the channel, I'm Dr. Dustin. I'm a board-certified dermatologist, and I'm here to help you be as healthy as you can, both inside and out, keeping your skin beautiful and your body healthy. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you wanna learn more about those kind of topics. Now, Jill Biden is definitely in the age range and of the ethnicity that is at more risk for skin cancer than others. So in that 70 plus age group, basal cell carcinoma is gonna be the most common type of skin cancer. And that's actually what she was diagnosed with after going in for a routine skin cancer screening. She was diagnosed with a basal cell carcinoma after a biopsy on the small spot above her right eyebrow is what we were told. Now I do skin cancer screenings and skin cancer surgery every day when I'm in clinic and I looked back at some of Jill Biden's old photos and I really didn't find anything obvious based on her photos. And we have talked about other presidents of the United States who've had skin cancer, including President Joe Biden who has had skin cancer. And it's easier to see some of the lesions on these individuals. But when I look back at her photos, I don't really see anything obvious there is the suggestion of a very small bump above her right eyebrow, but I don't know if that's what they discovered or not. This tells me that she was probably getting her routine screenings and they caught this lesion very early, which helps us to have quick treatment with as little scarring as possible. Now, while she went in for her treatment for that skin cancer above her right eye, she then showed the doctor a spot that she had noticed on her left chest. They biopsied that at the same time. They did immediate pathology and also diagnosed that with basal cell carcinoma. And they were able to treat both lesions at the same time with a procedure called Mohs micrographic surgery. Now Mohs surgery is a very specialized technique that was developed by a doctor named Dr. Frederick Mohs. He was a general surgeon who really pioneered this tissue sparing technique for skin cancer removal. The reason that it works is that these skin cancers tend to grow in what's called a contiguous fashion, meaning they start and they grow, but they always stay connected to each other. And so when we cut them out, we can look under the microscope and if we don't see any cancer around the edge or at the bottom, we know that we got the whole thing out. But if we see any cancer around the edge by looking at the microscope, we know that we need to go back. And one of the really elegant things about Mohs surgery is that we map out the cancer as we cut it off of the patient. So we know when we look under the microscope, which is up, down, left, and right on the specimen, and we can go back to the patient and only cut more in the area that was still positive. And this allows us to only remove skin that was damaged by the cancer and not remove a lot of normal skin. And that allows for a smaller repair, smaller scarring, better cosmetic result. Now we haven't seen any photos of Dr. Jill Biden following her surgery, but we're told from the White House physician that she's experiencing some swelling and bruising, which is very normal after a procedure like that, especially above the eye. It's not uncommon to have a black eye. And so I imagine she's gonna stay out of the public spotlight for a little while. Usually after a procedure like Mohs surgery on the face, the stitches are gonna stay in for about one week before they're taken out. And then the scar starts to look pretty good after maybe three, sometimes four weeks, depending on how large of an area was taken and the type of repair that was done. We like to do primary repairs, which is a straight line whenever possible, but sometimes that's not feasible if the area was really large or if it was on a really sensitive location like the tip of the nose or maybe somewhere on the ear where you can't just pull it together. And in those cases, we may do certain types of flaps or even a skin graft to achieve the best cosmetic result and of course function, preserving the function of that individual, whether that's their eyelid, their lip, their nose, their ear. We wanna make sure things work well and also look good. One of the coolest things about people, including myself, who perform Mohs micrographic surgery is that we're also trained in some of these really complex repairs to do these kinds of skin flaps. And a lot of people would compare that to plastic surgery. And it is a really cool technique to be able to take something that was, you know, could be potentially disfiguring to somebody and to see them back a few months later and have just a great cosmetic result. Now, Mohs surgery is not the most appropriate treatment for every type of skin cancer. And several groups that perform Mohs surgery got together and set what are called appropriate use criteria for the use of Mohs micrographic surgery. The reason that they tried to limit it a bit is because Mohs surgery tends to be a little bit more expensive to the healthcare system than just a traditional excision where we cut it out and sew it up and then send the pathology off to be read by another pathologist a week or so later. 
When we do that immediate feedback for most surgery, the physician performing that procedure is essentially getting paid as both the surgeon and the pathologist. But in there are many circumstances and there's data to support that on cancers on the face, the head and neck, these areas, that it actually saves the healthcare system money. But if surgeons started doing this all the time on the back or the stomach for very small skin cancers, it would actually be more expensive and certainly not appropriate for the healthcare system. And this is probably the only area that I have a question when it comes to Dr. Jill Biden skin cancer treatment. Of course, a basal cell that appears on the face anywhere pretty much is a candidate for Mohs surgery, so I definitely think that is the most appropriate thing. But when it comes to a skin cancer off of the chest, we're told that she had Mohs surgery as well. And in general, in order to qualify for Mohs surgery on most standard insurances like Medicare, Medicaid, and most commercial insurances across the country, a lesion on the chest would need to be a very aggressive subtype of basal cell carcinoma. And we don't know what subtype she had. It would also need to be either very large, like over two centimeters, like coming up on an inch large, or a recurrent tumor, something that was treated before and then still grew back. Now, if somebody's already in the chair and they're having Mohs surgery, it's not uncommon for them to have a procedure done exactly the same way because the surgeon's there, he's already got the equipment, he's already got the technician, everything's going to be done the same. But then the question is, are they billing it as Mohs surgery to the insurance company or to the government or whoever is paying for the this procedure or did they bill it as an excision with frozen section pathology and there's nuance to that it would not reimburse as much this is something that we just don't know the answer to. But we can say that the basal cell carcinoma here uh, above the right eyebrow should definitely be treated with Mohs surgery. And I will just concur that if I had a patient in the chair and I was going to be treating the same type of lesion at the same time, I would still use the Mohs technique, but we may just have to build that in a different way in order to be compliant with the insurance company regulations. No doctor likes having to practice according to the insurance company, but we do like to be reimbursed for the work that we provide. So it's important that we bill accurately accurately and appropriately for each patient encounter. We're told that Dr. Jill Biden has some residual swelling and bruising following her procedure. Again, very normal, and we hope that she has a speedy recovery. It's important to get your skin cancer screenings done regularly with a board-certified dermatologist. Getting those skin cancer screenings done if you are in a risk category for skin cancer can help to catch those lesions early if they do arise or help to freeze and prevent them when they're in that precancerous stage. Right now, if you're watching this, some of the most important things you can do to prevent the development of skin cancer is to wear your sunscreen every day. Yes, even in the winter, even on a cloudy day, make sure that you're putting on a sunscreen that you like to use, especially on sensitive areas like the head and neck. Don't forget the tops of the ears, the back of the neck, things like that. Put that sunscreen on every day. It has been definitively shown to help reduce your risk of developing skin cancer, especially when you're starting at younger ages in life. So if you're a teen in your 20s or 30s, now is the time to get in that daily habit of wearing sunscreen. We do hope that Jill Biden has a quick recovery. Let me know if you have questions about basal cell carcinoma or other types of skin cancer, skin cancer surgery, or skin cancer prevention, and we'll make sure to talk about them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.